Earth First, is a radical environmental advocacy group that emerged in the southwestern United States in 1979. It was founded on April 4, 1980, by Dave Foreman, Mike Rozelle, Howie Walker, Bart Kuhler, and Ron Kazar. Today there are Earth First, groups in Australia, Belgium, Canada, the Czech Republic, France, Germany, India, Ireland, Italy, Mexico, the Netherlands, Nigeria, New Zealand, the Philippines, Poland, Slovakia, Spain, the United Kingdom, and the United States, inspired by several environmental writings including, Rachel Carson's Silent Spring, Aldo Leopold's Land Ethic, and Edward Abbey's The Monkey Wrench Gang, a small group of environmental activists composed of Dave Foreman, ex-Yippie Mike Roselle, Wyoming Wilderness Society representatives Bart Kula and Howie Walker, and Bureau of Land Management employee Ron Kazar, united to form Earth First. While traveling in Foreman's VW bus from the El Pinacate y Gran Desierto de Alta Biosphere Reserve in northern Mexico to Albuquerque, New Mexico, the group pledged, "...no compromise in defense of Mother Earth." The co-founders of the group were called to action during the second, "...roadless area review and evaluation," Rare two by the U.S. Forest Service, which they considered a sellout by mainstream environmental advocates. The activists envisioned a revolutionary movement, with the goal to set aside multi-million acre ecological preserves all across the United States. Their ideas drew upon the concepts of conservation biology, which had been developing for over 20 years by notable scientists like E. O. Wilson. However, mainstream environmental groups were slow to embrace the new science. These events and ideologies coalesced after a grueling hike, as the men were headed toward Albuquerque. After Foreman called out Earth First, Roselle drew a clenched fist logo, passed it up to the front of the van, and there was Earth First. <laughs> Early years During the group's early years 1979 to 1986, Earth First mixed publicity stunts such as rolling a plastic crack down Glen Canyon Dam with far-reaching wilderness proposals that reportedly surpassed the actions that mainstream environmental groups were willing to take relying on conservation biology research from a biocentric perspective. The group's proposals were published in a periodical, Earth First. The Radical Environmental Journal, informally known as the Earth First. Journal. Edward Abbey often spoke at early gatherings, and his inspirational writings led him to be revered by the early movement. An annual gathering of the group was known as the Round River Rendezvous, with the name taken from an Ojibwa myth about a continuous river of life flowing into and out of itself and sustaining all relations. The Rendezvous is a celebration with art and music, as well as an activist conference with workshops and recounts of past actions. Another project led by the organization at this time was the creation of Earth First Foundation, a tax-deductible fund which was established to provide financial support for research, advocacy and education by Earth First, activists. The fund was later renamed the Fund for Wild Nature in 1991. In the spring of 1985, a nationwide call to action against the logging company Willamette Industries, published in the Earth First. 
Journal brought Earth First, members from around the United States to the Willamette National Forest of Western Oregon. After finding road blockades, carried out by Corvallis-based Cathedral Forest Action Group were not an efficient form of protection against logging, Marylander Ron Huber and Washingtonian Mike Jacobel devised tree sitting as a more effective civil disobedience alternative. On May 23, 1985, Mike Jacobel led the first Earth First tree sit. When U.S. Forest Service law enforcement official Steve Slagovsky arrived, Mike Rosell, Ron Huber, and others were arrested for sitting at the base of the tree in support. The first, "'Tree Sitting' lasted less than a day. Jakubal came down in the evening to look over the remains of the forest that had been cut down around him, and was arrested by a hidden Forest Service officer—but the tree-sitting concept was deemed sound by Earth First, members. Huber, Jakubal, and Roselle demonstrated the concept at the June 14 Washington F. Rendezvous. On June 23, a convoy of activists arrived at Willamette National Forest and set up tree platforms in Squaw, Three Timbersail, a location the group thought was threatened with imminent destruction. While at one point, up to a dozen trees were occupied, on July 10 a clash took down all the trees with platforms except for Ron Huber's after the other sitters had left for an overnight meeting elsewhere. Huber remained at his tree, dubbed Yggdrasil, until July 20 when two Lynn County Sheriff's deputies were lifted in a crane box and wrestled him from the tree. After 1987, Earth First, became primarily associated with direct action to prevent logging, building of dams, and other forms of development which may cause destruction of wildlife habitats or the despoliation of wild places. The change in direction attracted many new members to Earth First, some of whom came from a leftist or anarchist political background or were involved in the counterculture. Dave Foreman has suggested that this led to the introduction of activities such as a puke in at a shopping mall, a flag burning, the heckling of Edward Abbey at the 1987 Earth First, Rendezvous, and back and forth debates in the Earth First. Journal on topics such as anarchism, which Foreman and other Earth First, members did not wish to be associated. Most of the group's older members, including Dave Foreman, Howie Walker, Bart Kula, Christopher Maines, George Werthner, and Earth First. Journal editor John Davis, became increasingly uncomfortable with this new direction. This tension reportedly led several of the founders to sever their ties to Earth First, in 1990. Many of them went on to launch the magazine, Wild Earth, as well as the environmental group, The Wildlands Project. On the other hand, Roselle, along with activists such as Judy Bari, welcomed the new direct action tactics and leftist direction of Earth First. Starting in the mid-1980s, Earth First, increasingly promoted and identified with Deep Ecology, a philosophy put forth by Arne Nace, Bill Duvall, and George Sessions, which holds that all forms of life on Earth have equal value in and of themselves, without regard for the utility to human beings. Topic: <laughs> Since 1990. Since 1990, action within the Earth First movement has become increasingly influenced by anarchist political philosophy. 
This change brought a rotation of the primary media organ in differing regions, an aversion to organized leadership or administrative structure, and a new trend of identifying Earth First, as a mainstream movement rather than an organization. In 1992, Earth First's push toward the mainstream movement led to the creation of an offshoot group called Earth Liberation Front. The Earth Liberation Front was formally introduced during the 1992 Earth First. Round River Rendezvous, where young activists debated the effectiveness of civil disobedience activism tactics in light of the ever-increasing destruction of the planet by human activity. Elders of the Earth First! movement gave their blessing to this newly formed strike team known as ELF. ELF became the extremists of the environmental movement, just as the Earth First! movement itself had been when it was created a decade earlier. Earth First! protests commonly involved occupations of forested timber sale areas and other threatened natural areas. In these protests, dozens of people physically locked their bodies to trees, bulldozers, and desks using specially created lock boxes metal tubes reinforced with rebar through which protesters threaded their arms, or using bicycle U locks in order to lock their necks to other objects. In 1997, as part of the ongoing Headwaters Redwoods protests, activists locked themselves to a redwood stump which was carried into California Congressman Frank Riggs' office. The Headwaters campaign in Northern California aims to protect the last old growth redwood forests from logging by the Pacific Lumber Company. The Pacific Lumber Co. was bought out by Maxim, a hedge fund company that planned to liquidate its assets including these old growth forests. Headwaters has been an ongoing protest lasting over 15 years. In 1990, environmental activists Judy Bari and Daryl Cherney were injured when a pipe bomb exploded in the car Bari was driving. The FBI arrested Bari and her friends and accused them of planting the bombs. Other theories suggest FBI involvement, but it remains an open case. A civil case was later brought against the FBI and local police, which found Bari's and Cherney's civil rights had been violated. The largest timber sale in U.S. Forest Service history, the Cove Mallard timber sale, occurred in Idaho from 1992 to 1998. With the aid of a nearby landowner, a former land developer turned activist, Earth First, occupied the forest. As a result, Earth First, succeeded in saving most of the threatened wilderness area. Over 350 people from 12 countries were arrested and the project was reduced from its initial plan of 200 clear cuts and the construction of seven new roads, to 37 clear cuts and two new roads. In June 1993, Earth First, halted the construction of the Noble Road by erecting elaborate multi-layered barricades, which included U.S. Forest Service vehicles. These barricades were constructed in one night, during which activists traveled 17 miles through the mountains dodging law enforcement patrols who had been informed of the planned demonstration. The first tripod lockdowns occurred at this incident, which involved three 30-foot logs, tied together and placed upright, with an activist tied to a platform between them 20 feet in the air. The tripod was placed over trenches in which four activists were buried in quick-drying cement. Two additional activists used U-locks to lock their necks to the front axles of responding vehicles. U.S. Forest Service shot at fleeing activists and raided the private land with a SWAT team armed with M-16s. 
27 activists were arrested. During Free Cascadia, a mass occupation organized by Earth First, at the Warner Creek timber sale in Oregon, 50-plus activists continuously occupied the burnt forested mountains of Oregon for a year in 1994–1995. They endured bad weather and law enforcement raids. The barricades which were dug in reinforced trenches, forts with watchtowers, and tree sits enabled a constant occupation of the land while lawsuits and political actions locally and in Washington, D.C., ultimately saved the land. Warner Creek is often seen an example of how the Earth First movement was successful, though most Earth First occupations of timber sales, failed. In the summer of 1995, environmental activists attempted to occupy the old growth timber sale area of Sugarloaf Mountain in southern Oregon. The Sugarloaf Mountain had been in legal battles for over a decade when the Rider from Hell was added in committee to the Congressional Crime Bill of 1994, which mandated the logging of thousands of acres of old growth forest. The United States Forest Service declared an exclusionary zone of 30 square miles in southern Oregon and arrested anyone in the area including a local woman walking her dog. Over 100 federal agents, supported by helicopters and the elite U.S. Army Ranger trained law enforcement squad known as Camo Feddies, arrested hundreds of activists. The environmental activists engaged at all levels of protest with numerous public and illegal demonstrations by Earth First, protests at government offices locally and in Washington, D.C., tree sits in active logging zones, and even an attempted helicopter pad lockdown to immobilize logging helicopters. One tree from Sugarloaf Timber Sale, which was a four-day-long tree sit by a local father and son Earth First team, required nine log trucks to carry it out in sections. This tree was estimated to be over 400 years old and took 27 minutes to cut down using a seven-foot chainsaw. Earth First, responded by immediately occupying the nearby timber sale known as China left in early October 1995 to defend the old growth forest and the last wild salmon spawning grounds in Oregon. F activists used dragon lock boxes on both ends of the valley's only road to protect the area. A female Earth First, activist known as Ocean held the road for a day as police attempted to remove this human and cement blockade, allowing Earth First to dig in farther down the valley. This was the start of two year long occupation protest, during which a pickup truck was turned into a lock box to block the only bridge to the valley. Earth First, protesters were often tortured by police, who used pepper spray, pain compliance holds, police dogs, and the threat with guns in attempts to coerce the protesters to abandon their lockdowns. The Earth First movement has been labeled as a terrorist organization by its opponents. Supporters of the movement disagree, explaining that their cause is one of civil disobedience and honor for the Earth. The Earth First movement engages targets of environmental destruction with civil disobedience actions designed to draw attention and to slow down destruction of threatened wilderness areas, using lockdown techniques to create living blockades. The first acknowledged death of an Earth First activist occurred on September 18, 1998, in Northern California's Redwood Forests. Earth First, activist David Chain attempted to protect the forest by moving around inside the active logging site, thereby creating unsafe conditions for timber harvest. 
Normally, this would have resulted in the interruption of logging, but a large redwood, thought to be over 300 years old, was cut down by a Pacific lumber logger and fell upon Chain, who died instantly. Avalon, a member of the Earth Liberation Front, died on the night of winter solace 2005 in a prison cell, while in FBI custody, when he was being held for terrorism charges from multiple arson incidents over the last decade, including the Vale Ski Resort fire. The rest of his elf group was also arrested and are currently serving life sentences in federal prison for crimes that involved property damage. Avalon was a long-term Earth First activist, one of the occupation activists of Warner Creek, Oregon and the Cove, Mallard, Idaho protests for years and one of four whom constantly camped out in snow caves monitoring the only logging of Noble Road in the winter of January to March 1995 in 12-foot deep snow and sub-zero temps. After witnessing the destruction of America's Amazon jungle, where for hundreds of miles around was wild untouched mountainous forests, Avalon became disenchanted with mere civil disobedience and developed a more radical point of view. Most activists of Earth First, have previously participated in more moderate forms of environmental and political activism, including protest marches and writing letters to politicians. The Earth First, activist called Lama, of the Great Lakes Earth First, chapter in Chicago, had been involved in college activism for years. He traveled to D.C. and other capitals to lobby government officials, and even received a letter from President Clinton thanking him for his "...efforts to save the wild lands of America." Fawn, another Earth First, er, grew up as a Republican in a middle class family. Most members of Earth First identify as decentralized, locally informed activists whose ideas stem from communitarian ethics. Earth First adversaries characterize the group akin to terrorists. One of the early critics of Earth First, S. Change in Tactics later accused the FBI of deliberately introducing the concept of non-violence to the group. In various parts of the country, individual citizens and small groups form the base for grassroots political actions. These may take the form of legal actions, including protests, timber sale appeals, and educational campaigns or civil disobedience, including tree sitting, road blockades, and sabotage, also called ecotage, by some Earth First members, who claim it is a form of ecodefense. Often, disruptive direct action is used primarily as a stalling tactic in an attempt to prevent possible environmental destruction while Earth First, lawsuits try to secure long-term victories. Reported tactics include road blockades, activists locking themselves to heavy equipment, tree sitting, and sabotage of machinery. Earth First was known for providing information in the Earth First Journal on the practice of tree spiking and monkey wrenching, or ecotage, which have led to reports of injuries from such tactics, although there is no evidence that Earth First was involved in related activity. In 1990, Judy Bari convinced Earth First, in the Northern California and Southern Oregon region to renounce these practices, calling them counterproductive to an effort to form a coalition with workers and small logging businesses to defeat large-scale corporate logging in Northern California. Judy Bari car bombing 
In 1990, a bomb exploded in Judy Bari's car, shattering her pelvis and also injuring fellow activist Daryl Cherney. Bari and Cherney were later arrested after police and the Federal Bureau of Investigation suspected that they had been transporting the bomb when it accidentally exploded. Bari contended that extremists opposed to her pro-environmental actions had placed the bomb in her car in order to kill her. The case against them was eventually dropped due to lack of evidence. Bari died in 1997 of cancer, but her federal lawsuit against the FBI and Oakland, California police resulted in a 2002 jury verdict awarding her estate and Daryl Cherney a total of $4.4 million. 80% of the damages were for violation of their First Amendment rights by the FBI and police, who tried to discredit them in the media as violent extremists despite ample evidence to the contrary. The bombing remains unsolved. A documentary movie about the court case, entitled The Forest for the Trees, was released in 2006. It was directed by Bernadine Mellis, whose father is one of the lawyers featured in the documentary. The documentary Who Bombed Judy Bari, directed by Mary Liz Thompson, was released in 2012. The filmmakers are offering a $50,000 reward for information leading the arrest of the bomber. On March 21, 2011, a U.S. federal judge in California ordered the FBI to preserve evidence related to the car bombing. The FBI was planning to destroy all evidence in the case. Topic in the United Kingdom The Earth First movement in the United Kingdom started in 1990, when a group in Hastings, Sussex organised an action at Dungeness Nuclear Power Station in Kent. It grew rapidly, and many groups formed, with or without the F name, over the next years. The first major Earth First actions happened in 1992 and focused around the importation of tropical hardwood. The first major action had happened in December 1991 at Port of Tilbury. The second major action, the Merseyside Dock action, attracted between 200 to 600 people who occupied Liverpool docks for two days. This action coincided with the Earth First Roadshow, in which a group of UK and US Earth First ERs toured the country. Other early campaigns also focused on timber yards, most notably the Timot Yard in Oxford. There are now various regional Earth First groups. The F Action Update has been joined by the F. Action Reports website and a yearly Earth First, National Gathering. At the first gathering in Sussex the debate focused on the use of criminal damage as a protest technique. Earth First, decided to neither «condemn» nor «condone» criminal damage, instead it focused more on non-violent direct action techniques. Some people at the gathering coined the term Earth Liberation Front ELF, which became a separate movement which spread back to the U.S. Actions involving criminal damage did happen often under cover of night and were typically done under an ELF banner and attributed to elves and pixies, or the Earth Liberation Fairies, giving a distinctly British feel to the movement. Major growth in the direct action movement started with a concurrent focus on roads, and a protest camp at Twyford Down was started, against the M3 in Hampshire. Whilst Earth First, groups still played an essential part, other groups such as the Dongas tribe soon formed. Alongside Schnoos, such publications as the Earth First. 
action update, and do or die were means of communication between the groups. The movement grew to other road protest camps including the Newbury Bypass, the A30 and the M11 Link Road protest in London, where whole streets were squatted in order to slow down the construction work. Later the focus widened to other campaigns including Reclaim the Streets, anti-genetics campaigns, and Rising Tide. More recently, there have been groups such as Peter Lert, and Plain Stupid, the UK Earth First, groups differed considerably from the US groups as reported in a 10-year retrospective of the Earth First, by two of the founders Jake Bowers and Jason Torrance, we knew F. US's original hardline rednecks for wilderness attitude wouldn't appeal here, so we set out to build a group that combined radical action and social justice to protect Britain's few remaining natural places. Seeing ecological and social justice as one and the same, in addition to organizing along anarchist lines and bringing in other radical and militant struggles, mixed with audacious actions and real radicalism spread the F. ideal to other countries and helped morph the U.S. movement. Sabotage. <laughs> <laughs> Topic: Telluride Ski Resort. On August 10, 1991, vandals identifying themselves as members of Earth First forced the closing of the Telluride Ski Resort in Mountain Village, Colorado, using a chemical to write messages on 11 greens, such as "Earth First, Hey Duque Lives." and Ron you pig in relation to the incident the telluride times journal received a letter signed earth first stating that the ski lift had been sabotaged with a welding gas applied to the lift cable that weakens the metal topic <laughs> fairfield snowball ski resort Earth First, member Mark Davis pleaded guilty in federal court to malicious destruction of property at the Fairfield Snowball Ski Resort near Flagstaff, Arizona. Davis had been charged with using a torch to cut around the base of the top pylon of the main chair lift at Snowball on October 25, 1988. Topic: Nuclear power and weapons plants. Earth First member Mark Davis was sentenced to six years in prison for conspiring to damage the Rocky Flats nuclear weapons plant, the Diablo Canyon nuclear generating facility, and the Palo Verde nuclear generating station. Topic Documentaries Pickaxe, based on the nineteen nineties Earth First, led Cascadia Free State. In 2009 F, along with the Elf, were the subject of a documentary called Green with a Vengeance. A 2011 documentary on the Elf and F, entitled, If a Tree Falls, A Story of the Earth Liberation Front. Testify, Eco-Defense and the Politics of Violence. See also Conservation ethic Extinction Rebellion Green Anarchism Green Syndicalism Heyduke List of environmental organizations <laughs>